Well, I mean, and the reason we even decided to do a, a show tonight on on the spiritual resilience was because you would, I was, you know, I had to, re I had a lot to go through when I did my book. I mean, to just relive all of this, but I had a lot of everything I had to do had everything to do with I, that I had the strong resilience. Uh, it, it, I called Kelly many times. Said, "Is this really true? Are these are you really? This really happened?" And at every page, I uh, did wow. And it was all of this that happened that made you who you are, or that that you let you express yourself and let yourself use your spiritual gifts and let yeah. really, it's pretty amazing. So, well, I mean, that's when I discovered that I had resilience because I remember going through this. I remember a therapist said to me, "You know, you went through a lot. You have a lot of resilience." I had never really understood the term because in my mind, I've always had hope, and even though I went through a lot of devastation for whatever reason. Probably most, this... most human beings could not go through what you went through. When I read the book and it was all these different experiences and I'm talking to folks, life-changing, just one of those experiences someone has during a lifetime. You had several life-changing experiences yeah. and you came out of it strong. Yeah. And I, I, of course you had to do that to get here today, but my goodness, it's a wonderful teaching guide. Oh, yeah. thank you, James. I appreciate yeah. that. Well, yeah. you also have huge resilience. Yeah. yeah. You have gone through so much, too. Well, yeah. Now, so here's the question. And it's are not we... stopping. What's going on? No, exactly. I mean, <laughs> are, we, were we, are we born with it? I mean, I do know that you can cultivate it, but are we born with a certain amount of it, do you think? Yes. Do you want you want to start? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Let me let yeah. me start. Now I'll, I'll talk about what I what resilience is because yep. I think it's important that we know yep. what resilience is. It's the capacity of a person to maintain their core purpose and their integrity in the face of dramatically changed circumstances. Great definition. So it's a, the ability to not only overcome setbacks, to move forward. That's good. That's good. Is that a good one? It's a good one. That's a yeah. good one. I would, I would second that. And if we add spiritual resilience, it's again the same set, you know, sustaining one's sense of self and their purpose using a set of spiritual beliefs when they encounter adversity and stress and trauma. Well, and right on now, earth, we're going to have that. We're going to start school. So, I, as I'm yeah. doing your forward, and it's, it's very interesting because. I talk about people have to have that relationship with their soul in order to survive on this earth because it's the only thing that's real. But people are trying to look on the outside of themselves to measure things and to to yeah. you know to go through this world. They look at the outside instead of the inside. Yes. And that's that's gonna it's not gonna sustain them because it's not genuine, no. it's not real. No. There's no foundation and, in that. And what happens is there will be a trauma or an event or something where they will be forced almost to go inward. Like, you know, they get to have an illness or they have an accident or they have something. Or a child passes away. And exactly. They, you know, and then a lot of those parents who lost children, it forced yes. them on their spiritual path. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I think everyone is different. I think um, we definitely, I, I personally speaking, I came in with a sense of self. You no doubt about it. Truly did. I did. Yeah. I came with that strong, well, that four planets in Leo and the rest yeah. of it. But I always had a sense of myself as a little boy. As a little boy, my mother's a photograph of me. Had a photograph, and I have it now. It's a black and white of me with rosary beads. I was three years old. And she was dragging me to church already. But I remember looking at that photo and looking at that little boy's face and like, that's a strong soul. That's a strong, purposeful soul. And I just had a sense of, and I didn't have many friends as a kid. My mother was an alcoholic. It was really, I was the four, last of So four you didn't children. have it easy. I didn't have it easy at all. My father was never there. He was working all the time. And mm. yeah, it was tough picking up my mother off the floor, cleaning up after my mother. And it was tough. But I never felt, um, I just felt it was okay. I never felt poor me, poor people for me. Mm -hmm. And I always had this sense of, and it was, it's interesting that she was raised Catholic and brought us up Catholic. But that too, I never believed in that as far as religion. But I will say it did give me a sense of um, soul. When I went to these okay. masses and these ceremonies, I knew there was something within. Somebody talked about God, you know, mother, father, God, whatever. It, I knew there was something within me. I didn't know what to label it, but it had that strength of there's something more. There's always something more. And I always Do you like, think that's what kept you going? Yeah, I, I think I came in with a real, um, sense of re I could rely on myself. I, ah. I kind of knew who I was. Yeah. And and I met this lady, this wonderful lady that changed my life, Connie Leaf, who was really my my kind of adopted mother. Uh, she lived right around the corner from me. And her she I was 
it was so funny. I was trying to sell Easter candy for my school. I was about nine or 10 years old. And all of a sudden, this big Chevy convertible goes, and almost hits me. And this lady screams, hi, how are you? I have a boy who's just your age. Would you like to have a new friend? We just moved here. She became an incredible person in my wow. life, put me on my path. And uh, my first book is dedicated to Connie. And she had me believe in myself. She really gave me that sense of understanding. She said, you know, you're a very special person. And always remember that. Mm. When I was nine so that ten. was the spark that you needed. That was the spark that I needed to really believe in myself. But I, I, I did believe myself. And whether it was I was abused as a kid in different ways and mentally, emotionally, you know, physically, different ways. But I um, always had that sense of uh, this whole injury, always who I was. Yeah. Very. Were you kind of abused mentally, emotionally when you were a young kid? From the book I've read, I don't know if your child was like that because I was no. bullied. I mean, bullied. I, I, I didn't have any time. of that. I did I not have any of that. From yeah. day one, I was bullied. Ugh, bullied God. all the way to a seminar when I was 14. Like, why are these people taking me? Do I do this to me? Is it my height? And little later on, it dawned to me, I think it's my energy. I think it's on some level, they sense this energy yeah. and they want to control it or put it down or they don't understand it. And that's what they're doing. And I think that's part of it. I think it's a, an energy of some kind. Well, also, aside from the energy, it's a vibration you carried. It's a vibration. Yeah. And yeah. you carried that, and you probably yeah. could see through all the nonsense. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't understand why kids were beating each other up in Catholic yeah, That school. I never understood. I, I didn't I ex have that experience, but I never understood it. I never understood uh, how parents could be so horrible. I never understood this. I didn't get it. I didn't. To yeah. me, it was always uh, the real things were animals and gardens and, mm -hmm. you know, and people's smiles and laughter and, and joyful and having a good time. The other stuff I didn't understand. Yeah. The violence I didn't understand. Beating people up didn't understand. Never understood any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I never did. I never did. Uh, ever. And I'll, yeah. I'll never understand it here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, I, and as we get older, I still don't understand it, but. It, it, I know. I, I think it's that sense of yourself. I think it's the number one self-awareness. You have to yeah. have a sense of yourself and awareness and, and respect for yourself. Love mm -hmm. for yourself, respect for yourself. You know, uh, my, my friend Roberta, who you know very well. Oh, yeah. Um, she said to me, like when people do things to you, which is, it's, it's played out. She goes, and it's a saying she's used, which I love and I adopt it. You don't get to have me anymore. Oh, that's a good one. You don't get to have me anymore. And I've right. used it. Because, you know, if they're not the same frequency or treating with kindness or compassion, what's the point, right? So well, let me I, ask you this. Did you think that through these experiences that you could still see yourself in the future moving forward? Yes. I always had a sense of, I always knew when I was four years old that I'd be well known. I knew it. So you I, had that I, sense. My mother was walking me to nursery school one day and, she, and we met this man in the street. Uh, if I guess it was a neighbor and she said, where have you been? He said, California. And I said, I'm going to live there one day. I didn't know what it was. I was three years old, but I had a sense that I'd be um, living in California, wherever that was. Mm -hmm. I'd be well known as I got older, I thought it'd be through acting or writing even because I used to write plays. So, and then it became, I wanted to write sitcoms, I went to school, I got my degree. And then this all happened in a very strange way, but I always had a sense that I would be well known and, and I didn't pursue that per se. But and I always knew that I'd be taken care of. And okay, bingo. I think that might be something important. You always knew you'd be taken care of. That faith, that sense of yeah. faith, that yeah. sense. And then when I first started developing as a medium with Brian Hurst, one of the first things the guides would say was, "If you do our work with the spirit world, if you do this work, we will always take care of you. You will never be in need." And they've held up their end of the bargain. You know, it's been hard, hasn't been easy. It's like right. every life because right. you got to grow and learn. But um, it was that sense of faith. It was that sense of belief and that sense of, I knew the big, there's a bigger picture. There's something more than just this human world. Did you experience despair? Yeah, I, I somewhat, yes. I mean, my first move to LA, mm -hmm. I was promised a job at a TV show and that producer lied to me. Right. It never happened. I was stuck in LA, not knowing a soul, not knowing where to live, what kind of job. And I left my mother back in New York who had a stroke and we couldn't speak to her. She couldn't speak to me. It was, and I had no one in LA, no one. And it was just a matter of, and I, I remember it very well. I was at Beechwood Canyon, of course, in LA. I and lived in Beechwood Canyon. You lived in Beechwood Canyon. Yeah. And I was looking at the rearview window of this horrendous car that I had, that I drove cross country, it was falling apart. And there was the Hollywood sign. Right, <laughs> right there. I, yeah, that's right there. where I lived, right there. <laughs> under like, the letter T. <laughs> I said, are you joking? What is this all about? This is before anything spiritual. I said, what is this all about? But I knew I had to be there. 
I didn't know why, but I knew it a sense I had to be there. And I was determined and I was dogged determination. I went through and tried to become a sitcom writer and got I worked many, many different jobs. And every job that I had, I used to, I, used to, I lived in the moment with it. I worked in a hospital, a law firm, an advertising agency. And I had a good time with every single job. I made the best out of every situation and people loved it. People loved me to work. I worked at a hospital for five years. It was a two week temporary job. It had been five years because they throw me in different departments because they loved my energy. Right, sure. and, and, and I, I always thought the light side of life. I always thought there's mm-hmm. something brighter. So you always had hope. There's always been hope. Yeah. Always. Hope is a big one with for resilience. It's huge. Hope. What do you think about living like that sense of self and resilience? Oh, sense of self is everything. Yeah. Sense of self. Now for me, James, I had a that major tra- brain injury and I lost everything, but I, I lost my daughter. Even I lost my home. I lost the relationship I was living in. I lost everything. And I'm seeing dead people. I mean, I, 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 well, you're leaving out a big part of the book, and the first oh, part of your life as a child, and moving on, you had a lot of stuff going on as well. Yeah, it was pretty traumatic. There was a lot, a lot of dramas there along the way, but in this particular case, I didn't have a sense of self, and I. But what I did have is that resilience. That even though I didn't know who I was, I knew I was in a state of becoming, and I think that's really important yeah. with resilience. That you know that you might get the worst trauma, you might have you know, this happen and this happen, but you always have to know that your soul is there to grow. You're growing beyond anything you could ever imagine. Yeah. And you have to sustain that growth. You just keep moving forward with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's that, whether it's that, and I mean, you had it not easy, but yeah. you always looked outside yourself. I did. The, the resolve, I did. All those relationships you were in and mm-hmm. you always tried to please people and look outside yourself. Yeah. And at the end, you found that it was really inside. It's I, all I inside. And then I got to really know thyself. Yeah. That was everything. Know thyself is everything. So you, when you know thyself, you can go through big adversity because you do know you'll come out on one end, another end on some end. Yeah, it's but true. you'll my, get my, through that. My grandmother was very close to as a kid. Uh, it was very close to her, and I'll never forget the, one of the first things she taught me. And it was a Shakespeare quote: "You know, know thyself, thy own self be true." Tells the edge of husbandry, and with the whole through saying. I remember I was raised with that: "To thy own wow. self be true." And um, yeah, it was pretty interesting. So that would have gone inward to you too. Yeah, yeah, spoke to so my heart. So then you would have. Yeah, spoke to your heart. Right. And I guess it was that joy that I had their fun. And I wanted to share that state of fun and joy with everyone. Ah, I think that okay. was it too. Right. So I think that was part of it. And yeah, we're, we are souls having a human experience. So we have to have the sense of relationship of our soul. That's how I've gotten through life is that sense of there's something much bigger. I'm a soul having a human experience. And that's really, that's really. That's everything. Well it's so it's important. Yeah. yeah. Because when you have the relationship with your soul self, the rest is easy. Right. The rest right. is easy. Not, not, you know, and the other thing which works out really well is stepping back, like we just talked earlier about perspective. Stepping oh. back. It's very right. important. Don't be plugged into it, but step back and observe. It's just temporary. It's 60, 70, 80 years. It goes by very quick. Well, so, in other words, not only to step back, but look back and look, look how far you have come. Yeah. You know, sometimes we forget we're getting them, it's stuck in a, uh, you know, some dire situation and we forget. And we, what well, this is like resilience is building a muscle. Yeah. And for every time you increase your resilience, just remember it takes time and it takes intentionality. You have to be really True. mindful that you are moving forward on something. And you've got to, there are some things that you can do to increase your capacity for resilience. And one of the things is build your connection. So, don't isolate. If you have a situation, don't isolate. I mean, community connect is with, really important. Community is so important. Really connect important. with empathetic people or understanding yep. people yep. and um, only be with people that really understand what you have gone through and that they can validate your feelings, you know? Right. And, and it's it's hard, like going back to what I said earlier, when you look outside yourself for that yeah. sense of self, you got to first have it within yourself. You have to have it within yourself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, and the and then, perspective, your perspective is very important. And like you yeah. said, community, I think like a support net, a support group, people, right. like I said, like-minded people. Right. And, well, and that's really what happened to me, James, is through this, you know, horrendous, very challenging situation, I started finding community. 
And of course, that meant a lot of people were, in fact, everybody was out of my life. Um, in fact, everybody. Um, yeah, that but happens. Then, it, that's how that happens. It's a total washout. Total washout, you know. <laughs> when you live your truth, it's a total washout because a lot of people can't relate to you then. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Except for you. <laughs> Except for me. I got you. I got you. <laughs> exactly. I, I Kelly, a big one for me, which I, I'm sure is for you too, is the sense of control. You can't control yeah. everything. No. You can't control people or situations. All you no. control is how you respond. Because people are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. You can't control them. And that, once I yeah. learned that, was a big one. That was a Isn't big that one. a big lesson? Big one. Yeah. Because yeah. people fun. are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. And I they may have no, you, no intention about keeping you in the loop of anything. It's a funny thing. And, and you know, I have down here a thing about engage in positive self-talk. What i got to say to you is, now I do, but I always go back, not all the time, but I look back and reflect. And I'm really happy with the good things I've done. Right. Wow. How you've changed. You've changed. I, I you've changed people's lives. You've well, done great work. You've, you know, I, 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 I say good for you for doing that. Good. Good on you. Yeah. It's my work. You know, it's my mission. But you have to re look at your life, everybody, and just look back at the positive things you've been through right. and have that positive self-talk that, you know, it's not easy down here on this earth. It's a hard, hard school. It is a hard we've, school. We've made it down here. We've come back. And we're doing absolutely it. one of the things that you can do to help yourself if you are in a very challenging situation and you really need to help with your you know getting your um fostering your resilience is when i say this i mean find a purpose and the purpose can be yeah. simply help others volunteer at it let's say you've lost your beloved dog volunteer at a homeless shelter or let's say, you know, you somebody uh, is very sick with cancer and you need to help get them food, help them. In other words, get out of your own. Yeah, it's really, thing. really important. And that's really what happened to me, James, is when this all happened and I started finding community, I realized I had a gift that I might be able to help people with. And that that was such a resilience for me. It literally lifted me out of, you know. Lifting yeah, me up. And, and when you come from that heart space, there's nothing like it. Yes. You demonstrate compassion and oh. kindness. And you do that by doing those examples of helping other people. They'll look at you doing these things and think, wow, it takes a lot of compassion, understanding, caring, kindness. And that's what needs to be fostered and shared with everybody. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's it sure certainly does. Oh my gosh. Um and embrace healthy thoughts. Okay, keep it. You're so in psychic. I was just gonna Is read that... about that. You're just okay. Crazy. You go ahead. You go ahead. You're killing me, Kelly. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna read a little bit from the spiritual unfoldment white eagle book. Oh, it's, uh, this it's is a, a great class. one. Yeah. And I just it's one thing here about um restoring wholeness to your soul. So it says in the invisible rays. Oh, well, let me explain first of all. White Eagle was a guide who came through Grace Cook, who was a very well respected British medium in 19, 1930s, I believe, 1940s. Mm -hmm. And White Eagle, the sayings and the, the information that was channeled from White Eagle was so profound to people. They started these White Eagle lodges all over the world. And people would go to like Masonic temples. They would go to this, these White Eagle lodges. I've been to several, by the way. I you think have? Still, yeah, I, in, in Long Beach, California. I was there once and one in Hollywood years okay, ago. Okay, wait. I lived there and I didn't know about didn't this? Know I'm so bummed. Okay. <laughs> so it says, restoring wholeness to your soul. In the invisible rays, which are all around us, everybody, are certain qualities, certain colors and vibrations, even perfumes, which can be drawn upon by the healer and then passed through to the patient. Usually when the body falls sick, something is lacking or there is an imbalance in the spiritual being, in the soul of the patient. You as a healer are working in company with the angels to supply the missing element to restore balance, health, or wholeness to the soul. You are a conductor of these pure spiritual forces. So you yourself must endeavor to be like the priests and priestesses of old. You must attune yourself by pure living, pure thinking, pure action, and right behavior as a human and spiritual instrument. Wow. I so love it. It, it's drawing from, uh, for me, it's the, the ethers. It's a, that prana of life from the trees and the flowers and people. And it's just that oneness, that source energy that builds up that vibration and that yes. celebration of joy in life. Yes. That restores me. That could matter. Absolutely. Resilience. That is absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, Ellie says, Kelly, would you call it faith? I think so. Yeah. It, I, I wouldn't it's, label anything, but faith is a part of it. I guess it's hope, a part of faith, it. Yeah. understanding, perspective. Yeah. 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 Uh, Mandy Souther says, I cannot reiterate how much you two keep 
me from teetering off into complete darkness. Oh, thank <laughs> you, Mandy. Yes, we do the same for each other. <laughs> that is true. I mean, I think that's why James and I do this. We want to make sure everybody's able to move on and move up and continue to move forward. You don't get stuck. stuck don't get stuck. Good. You don't be don't. stuck. No. It's like a repeat of a program over and over and over again. It's like, now let's move on right. to a new program. <laughs> oh, we have somebody from Malaysia tonight, James. Oh, welcome. I Hi, Gopal. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Jolene K says, I love the beauty of We Are Given. It's another White Eagle book, We Are Given. So oh. White Eagle, yeah, it's, you can go online, White Eagle, beautiful stuff. Yeah. This is just one on healing, but there's so many. I have Beautiful there. Road Home. Beautiful Road Home is great. That's a yeah. great one too. Oh, I also have this Heal My Heal Thyself. Heal Thyself. Yep. That's a great, great one. one too. It's pure thought. It's just pure loving energy. Yes. It's just it's really and don't great. you think, James, when you even just open any page of White Eagle, it it, it does something. It it lifts you up and it reminds you immediately. It's like yes. a, a quick tap to remind you who you are. Yeah, so another book does that too. Okay, <laughs> I love that. I, you know, I love that too. I love that book. I'm going to read a little passage from John okay. Donahue. And this, this is, is a great book. international bestseller. Mm -hmm. My friend Margaret gave me this in Ireland. And my friend and, James um, gave me this. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, he, now this is really interesting. John Donahue is a very well known poet and best selling author. And I found that the, my book, Talking to Heaven, and this book, Anakara, was on the international bestseller list the same month, the same week. We're on the same. Did I tell you that? We're the same No, list. you did not yeah. tell me that. Yeah, say 1997, wow. I think it was. So this exact book. So here we go. This is called The Seasons in the Heart. There are four seasons within the Elay heart. Now, Elay means an Irish scout for a soul friend. Okay. When it is winter in the world of nature, all the colors have vanished. Everything is reduced to gray, black, or white. All the visions and beautiful, rich coloring of nature thin out completely. Grass disappears in the land, and the earth itself is frozen and perished in a bleak, self-retraction. In wintertime, nature withdraws. A tree loses all its leaves and retires inwards. When it is wintertime in your life, you are going through pain, difficulty, or turbulence. It is now wise to follow the instinct of nature and withdraw into yourself. When it is winter in your soul, it is unwise to pursue new endeavors. You have to lie low and shelter until the bleak, emptying time passes. This is nature's remedy. It minds itself in hibernation. When there is good pain in your life, you too need sanctuary in the shelter of your own soul. One of the beautiful transitions in nature is the transition from winter to springtime. An old Zen mystic said, when one flower blooms, it is spring everywhere. When the first incident, the infant-like flower appears on the earth, one senses nature stirring beneath the frozen surface. There is a lovely phrase in Gaelic, Arbecha, meaning that there is a quivering life about to break forth. The wonderful colors and the new life the earth receives make spring a time of great exuberance and hope. In a certain sense, spring is the youngest season. Winter is the oldest season. Winter was there from the very beginning. It reigned amidst the silence and bleakness of nature for hundreds of millions of years before vegetation. Spring is a youthful season. It comes forth in a rush of life and promise, hope, and possibility. At the heart of the spring, there is a great inner longing. It is a time when desire and memory stir toward each other. Consequently, springtime in your soul is a wonderful time to undertake new adventures, new projects, and make some important changes in your life. If you undertake this when it is springtime in your own soul, with the rhythm, the energy that is hidden, in the light of your own clay, it comes out and works for you. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> wow. So we have that inside ourselves. I mean, yes. Maybe it's just about the seasons of the soul. Yes. The seasons to the soul. Yes. And it's very, very true. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that, James. And it means soul friend. It means it's Gaelic. Uh, yes. Anakara means soul friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great book. Mm. Philosophy and insights into the soul self. Yeah. Oh, no. It's, that's just beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I love that. That's good, Ellie. All you need to do is look up to the stars and the sun to soothe the soul. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's the wholeness of your being, and no one can take that from you. If you allow them to, they will, but you don't have to allow people to take your light. Never no. dim your light for anybody. Never. No. no, never, ever. Renee Hansel says, reminding ourselves that we choose to be here is a powerful reminder that we believe we are resilient enough to create this journey of experience in the of life. Absolutely. Very good, Very good Renee, yeah. Yeah. It, it's really important, that, again, perspective, that you realize you're a soul, 
having a human experience, not the other way around. And also what's helped me a lot, Kelly, is um, with resilience and just my perspective is that I know that when we pass out of the physical and go into the mental world, the spiritual, there will be a, a life review. Right. And you experience everything you've done on this earth 10 times, 20 times, 30 times stronger than you first did on the earth. Not from your perspective, but from the person's perspective that you had the action with how they receive the energy. So you're going to see what energy you gave out. And to me, that's a good one to think, I want to only have a good past, you know, past life review. I, <laughs> I don't have a bad one, so I better do some good things because. I, I think that all the time, make a good choice here. <laughs> it's responsibility. And once you become responsibility. Yeah. and spiritual, you have to have that sense of responsibility for your choices that you make. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Whether it's, whether it's a sense of divorce or, you know, right. ending friendships or whatever, if you, if you do it with a sense of integrity mm -hmm. and responsibility, it can't go wrong. Yeah, no, that's so, so true, you know. I mean, try to maintain a hopeful outlook. Yeah. I think it's really important if you can be positive. I mean, James and I, we were talking this afternoon or this morning about, I know somebody who's gone through a lot of things and keeps waiting for the next shoe to drop. If you are constantly waiting for the next shoe to drop, I guarantee that shoe will drop. But if you think on it, get rid of that negative, and we've always talked about getting rid of the negative, really the narrative should be a positive, a positive about moving forward. Even in the sign, even in the middle of adversity, you're yeah. still thinking in a positive way. It's true. You have to train that your brain for that. Yeah. Tomorrow is another day. What is it? What about when <laughs> tomorrow oh, my mother tomorrow will be a better day. Tomorrow will be a better day, yeah. yes. And, and I've on, lived on by that. Wind. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yeah, right. That's a good one, too. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let it matter. go. What is important in your life? What is not important? Don't pay attention to those right. little things that, right. that aren't that important. That's right. Really and very... the other, learn from your past. Yeah. yeah you know, again, you can look at back at your experience and say, what have I learned from that? Um, and often you'll have an experience. Sometimes the experiences are you've never had this experience before. And so, all right, just make good choices when you have these uh, new experiences make good choices i also think kelly living as can i say a spiritual life or having an awareness of spiritual life because mm -hmm. i every day i do and oh yeah every day every I, day i realize that and it's it's pay important to the um the little things in your life yeah. um but they're very important little things how you treat people the, the oh. kindnesses you've given you know i often think it's like the a basket full of flowers or and mm -hmm. or it's whatever and spreading those flowers around when you meet somebody spreading love and joy and changing their perspective for a positive way helping them to look at life in a positive joyful way because we touch people's lives every day and yes we do you know either mm -hmm. you're a student or a teacher and we got to acknowledge that and and look forward to helping people look forward to sharing compassion and kindness and understanding and joy and we don't know it all but you know here to learn Oh, wow. I well, I love what you said. I can just imagine the flowers. I'm, I'm going to be thinking of that one, you know, pass, like, it's like you're giving them flowers. I love that. Peg Schwartz says all of us come to earth as students and teachers. And that is the truth. And you never know where you're going to be at any moment. Yeah. It always be this to, or that. Yeah. Always be willing to have that uh, aha moment. Always, I call it the journey of discovery just, mm -hmm. and, and really open up to discover all different types of things what each day wake up say wow what am i going to discover today about myself or the world i'm in or different people isn't that a great way to start your day yeah yeah, yeah. Each, i talk to pearl say wake up honey what are we going to do today what are we going to discover today yeah. <laughs> what challenges will there be what new insights will we have <laughs> right oh my god I, I love that um cynthia asked this question she says are there harder places to incarnate than earth I think there are. I think there. It's you know we look at it from a linear point yeah, of view. Yeah, that's true. That's you know? true. But I think the Earth is pretty heavy duty. But yeah. who who are we to know? <laughs> Can you imagine? Pretty, yeah. I no. 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 Know, in the spirit world, when people pass over, they've talked about going on tours, and they've shown me that my mother had talked about it when she first passed over. Um, there are different levels, and they they give them a tour of all the different levels that exist, and it's pretty scary in some levels because there are those people that are just very unevolved those souls mm -hmm. and then this dank dark place and you know they have no sense of self or yeah, it's pretty it's pretty wild yeah oh gosh there are many worlds worlds within worlds if you will but always aspire to be something great always aspire always always thanks everybody thanks <laughs> <Bye>. everybody <laughs> You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. 
That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. <laughs> the Jones and Kelly Show.